welcome to this uh, video in this video I will uh, I will just explain or show some API design stuff what to consider for an API design and this is Said from Toronto Ontario Canada so site straight out home. here I put some random short notes and youtube.justatc.com I upload uh, different uh, videos nothing dead just random stuff so youtube.justatc.com so you can see many different uh, stuff are here and yeah, you can see some of our other websites some probably are not working the domain expired I no longer want to continue anyway so API design right yeah uh, then I will just uh, say some random stuff probably I did not put much thought or as a presentation this might not be a great one but if you know nothing or if you are just starting and want to know what are the different considerations uh, still if random stuff you might get some information what to consider but uh, if you are an expert you are an expert what can I say API design and API engineering considerations so for sure understand I did not spend time to organize or even did not get the PowerPoint slides anyway so considerations so API what is it it's an application programming interface application programming interface uh, if, if you are watching this you probably already know what application programming interface is but who uses API Yeah, many organizations big and small they can use uh, API many uh, internet based service providers it's not internet service providers internet based I think online service providers they can use API I think it's, it's, it's kind of uh, the service oriented architecture service oriented programming or those kind of thing let's say for banks if they want to uh, expose some of the uh, features of their internal system and one third party or other, other to interact with them they don't want to expose all those different things but through an API just uh, some methods some some features they can expose people can call and uh, take those services and practically I had to develop a through a spread intensity uh, API I think yeah, it was uh, it was just to indicate in where Canada in, in which Canadian provinces or cities and the at current time and the uh, where is the most intense in terms of uh, mm, the intensity there are many different uh, different metrics so the API the consumer I think it is supposed to be used by medicine companies like Tylenol or Benelin they are supposed to be using this API and there are some other third party they are supposed to be hosting this anyway so what are you, what are you to be doing I think when they will be uh, calling from the client side uh, they will be calling some method and some intensity metrics some data will be, will be going there and based on that they will be showing some uh, showing 
the intensity level at, at current location or probably they can redirect their banners into the uh, where, where it needs to be shown uh, so if the intensity is higher in Toronto there is no point of showing it in uh, Vancouver where there is no spread so those, those kind of things and probably let's say if the banks uh, want to integrate their point system and redeem those points use some some third party uh, third party through some third party they want to uh, redeem those points those kind of uh, stuff probably bank credit card and all those the point gathering and all those things and uh, there might have some sort of integration uh, between these systems and there might have some data communication on functionality or information gathering collection and based on some providing some features so it uh, it can be um, it can be there and anyway i think uh, you already already know so api yeah i probably as i told probably it could be better if i could uh, put some thoughts together and put put the information together and and then uh, i would be describing that could be probably better probably as i am telling now i might organize this information in a better way and probably create an, one more uh, video that's another thing i think there are uh, uh, two concepts soup and uh, rest i think i think uh, the two concepts considering uh, web service based uh, applications and many of the uh, payment processing services and they also come is in these flavors soap and rest so if it's kind of xml verbose and uh, kind of old uh, complicated protocols i think it's over on top of uh, so protocol and rest it's uh, based on http protocol and all those uh, get post put patch deleted these are already part of the um, http request protocol it is already there so there is no complicated uh, um, complicated other protocols are required to implement this uh, service based uh, uh, applications so rest is preferred and then the trend is uh, going to the rest i think many payment processing systems like uh, mira sarp uh, to my understanding and to my knowledge they used uh, they used rest and i, I had to work with uh, mira sarp and probably had to work with uh, monaris uh, monaris payment processing systems so that uses uh, uh, so best i have to use it in java platform and mirasarp this actually was both in php and uh, microsoft platform i think it was in originally in, there was an application that was using uh, mirasarp in, uh, in microsoft platform so i had to convert that module into into php platform and then uh, I, I had to use it there anyway I'm probably going off topic too much. I was trying to show the design considerations. Anyway, the main thing is it's a user interface. Users will be calling for different uh, services. So one thing you need to make sure, you need to make sure that uh, the consuming is easy. It's, it's a pleasant to be used by the consumers I think there can be many different ways to provide this okay new slides okay let's see uh, okay I'll be focusing on rest so rest is about get put delete patch and post so you are using rest you are using uh, uh, http protocol 
and your REST API is supposed to provide this feature so you need to implement this right the way it is supposed to be doing uh, so you should implement get depending on the applications you can implement put delete patch post so get is to retrieve data to supply some information to the client so when you're using in, in your get function uh, do not update anything do not update any data so implement it in such way so that uh, no data gets simply uh, updated it just get um, post is for update patch is for partial update put to store data or yeah from the client side to the server side and delete you have to delete resource okay so probably delete in many cases delete may not be that common if you it's a public facing api it probably this may be more common if uh, there are some organization to organization and there are some agreements it, it depends on the application and authorization you have delete uh, security and all those things needs to be more here and probably you have to have some sort of uh, not permanent delete i think in reality it's better to keep all the all the data because uh, storage is cheap for sure uh, yeah some sort of inactive or those kind of things anyway so when you are using implementing rest in your rest repair this is what you are supposed to do so this is what you should do right get only keep the information post only update do not update in get patch only partial update to start to start to send file yeah probably it is also a place uh, i think security probably is more in here in get request there should be some that but get put delete post yeah they probably mm, okay anyway the main concept is rest is this so implement this so what else let's say in get and probably we you need to make the URL friendly, right? Friendly to the users, consumers, and You need to make the URL more explorable. Okay, let me see. Friendly, usually the standard is the main URL, and then if you put users, then it will be running all the users, right? If you put users 12, so it will be users with ID 12. <coughs> So this is what it is, users, employees, 12. Okay, more explorable, probably I missed an E or what it is saying. Anyway, or it probably is not a dictionary word or something, anyway. So more explorable. What do I mean? Then if the user wants to see change the URL, different parameters and try to see what it is doing. One thing is, uh, let's see if you go to the Twitter or some other standard APIs, uh, public APIs, you probably can change the URL, give some different parameters and they probably will be giving you the JSON or XML. I think JSON is probably more preferred uh, output. Uh, uh, okay. So yeah, 
URL manipulation, I'm trying to see what, what they um, uh, return rather than the making the consumer always writing some code and trying to figure it out what your uh, API returns. So that, that can be difficult for them. It probably is one, one another uh, way to make your uh, um, API more pleasant to the, to the consumers. So that is one thing. So there are some uh, challenges in the gate. Let's see. So you are giving the users and employees, but what if? Uh, what if you need? Let's say for a um, for a for an API. Let's say for a um, Rogers Channel API. So you want all all the users with some particular channel or all the uh, for a channel all the users or probably all the messages uh, as the user has. Uh, if it's an online communities community system, all the messages that a user has posted or communicated through, all those things, it's not that just the one single thing, not one user, not the one message. Yeah, you probably have to define what exactly you want, but um, what let's say. So this kind of uh, URL format, it probably will not work, right? So how do you put? Do you put users and channels or messages but if you want some particular user 12 but what about channel 20 or probably you want all the messages but now I think which one is what but it's not the good probably uh, mm, it might work this way users 12 channels 20 that probably mm, and probably then what they will be returning for users 12, channels 20. Yeah, but probably sometimes it, it might work, but probably you are. Uh, mm, okay, I think uh, there might have some ways. Sometimes people use, uh, let's see, users colon ID channels. It, 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 it might mean that. Uh, for user ID 12, all the channels, or probably users channels. Anyway, I think there are some standards. I'm not sure I'm 100% perfect here. You, you probably need to see how this, uh, what is the start for this, this kind of things when, when the relations and you want to, uh, you want to um, pass it in the parameter and return the data set. So. Um, yeah, there probably are some is, is standard of the of the um, URL format. You need to keep uh, keep up to that standard. Then probably standards and how is the reality? Yeah, those kind of things. But one of, one another option is search. So for these complicated cases, you can use search and probably some sort of uh, parameter users twelve channels. Uh, 50 probably search messages and yeah, there are some standards here yeah I think uh, I'm not giving you the exact standard I'm telling just please explore it here explore and find out what is the exact thing but search is one one another way search is not telling it's, uh, uh, yeah it's a little deviation from the standards but still uh, I think what can you do it probably messages Okay, so that is there. Okay, and okay. And one another thing is, uh, let's see, get, and you are telling users. And get means the URL and the, all the users. So users might have hundred fields. It must. Um, It may not be you that, that has 100 fields, but there, there may be some other entities that have 100 different fields. So do you want to return all the fields to the users? Your application might dictate what you need to um, expose. It probably is the agreement or the type of service that you are providing based on this probably your uh, 
uh, you have in mind what are to dispose, expose you know, in terms of user request but one thing is keeping it hard coded but another thing is making it more flexible and there are some sort of configuration stuff configuring where you can configure when someone requests users these are the fields you want to return some sort of configuration in between that might be useful but another approach is you can also uh, can give the users the informations if i e l d s fields name address so only name and address will be returned to the uh, consumer yeah you are not querying more information so less uh, communication overhead less network uh, traffic so more efficient so that way um, it's it's good i think you need to keep that is in mind yeah configuration thing that can be one other thing it depends on the application right so what else in terms of design let me see as I told I, I can be a little bit uh, uh, random this topic to that topic let's say security there are a couple of uh, couple of approaches that you can do let's say what what Twitter or Facebook what do they they do they actually have some developer uh, developer interface you log in there you create your account and then they give you the, some key and secret even the Amazon AWS if you want to access them with, with the client AWS CLI you can also use this key and secret some keys and some secrets uh, yeah no. oh, what is the concept you can create that interface that your particular user Whoever, whoever will be consuming they can log in the verification and you give them some key and secret and they can uh, use that key and secret as part of all of their requests or all the app all the application they will be developing they have to put uh, some sort of key and secret field there and it will be it will be coming there and you will know who is what and you can, you can store them their emails and you know, probably just some sort of stuff and another op option is OAuth right Authentication, I think, uh, I think if you don't have the time and resource to implement this, you can go through OAuth, it's a third party verification. Yeah, probably you can uh, give the option to authenticate with your API system using some stuff like Google or Facebook OAuth. So using their Facebook ID or Google ID, they will be able to login into your system. I think I implemented this in, in sites like forerunner.ca. So OAuth, uh, yeah. yeah. Many of the applications, many of the sites, they will be asking you to use your uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or Gmail account to authenticate. Yeah, there are some authentication protocols. I, I believe I, I, I read the internal communication, how this happens, but probably not. I cannot say the details off the top of my head anyway. So, OAuth. What else? Ideally, this will be more secure. And SSL, you can make your consumer to request to e or SSL enabled URLs yeah so you have to implement SSL plus uh, I think the encrypted communication right the data you are so that the your data or their data consumer data it's communicated in such a way so that third party cannot uh, uh, eavesdrop 
into the communication so that can be one thing and what else I think security many times it comes about uh, validation or XSS those kind of thing validation XSS okay let's say in your API design you might not have this kind of things XXS okay let's see uh, you might implement this kind of thing if you have if there are some uh, predefined clients only those clients will be uh, requesting to your API if, if that is the case probably you have to do and validation if you are allowing people to send some sort of data probably field or all those things many stuff to add to the uh, to the URL validation is still might be required because uh, if it's a public API if they are trying to pass some sort of scripting code and all those things JavaScript code or, um, or taking advantage of the um, framework or module or the stuff that are that you are using on your end the uh, I think the security risk or security was there if they are trying to uh, exploit those things so you probably have to do those kind of input validations I think yeah those kind of things so yeah you can you probably can put some sort of uh, um, module there for this uh, this type of cases I think another good design how many minutes already I have discussed 27 okay I might create multiple videos rather than putting everything in one slide okay what I was trying to get to is limiting the client request limiting the client request let's how many request event can make in a minute or or per 24 hour kind of thing. I think Twitter has has uh, this uh, information, right? Twitter has implemented. It's a good thing. Otherwise, I think the consumer they can put some infinite loop and continuous uh, things, and they can overload your server unnecessarily. And if there are, uh, yeah, that can be. And probably if Twitter does one one another thing that. Uh, how many applications or they will be allowing from some particular consumer or particular uh, uh, someone with, with the same IP address or same key and uh, secret those kind of limitations I think it, it might depend I think uh, you might implement a very uh, generous system depending on your platform if it's very scalable and you have the business benefit you might want to go for this but this is something to keep in mind the, but still uh, I think continuous request and continuous data that probably is overkill even if your system is very scalable you can provide that so if everybody does it that way uh, okay you have to see but in general it, it's, it's not a very attractive keeping it open 100% in uh, most cases it will be a good idea to limit the request I think there are some standard format I think X rate limit or those kind of things there are some standard headers to, um, to inform the consumer okay this is the this is the situation and also in the error 
you have to show those things okay so as I came to the point of error for sure it is uh, it is a uh, good design practice uh, error ha how to handle those errors or informing the errors to the consumers mm, one thing is let's see as we are using HTTP so HTTP has been a different error codes error codes are success codes 200 is success code 201, 503, 404. I think there are 200 series, 500 series, 400, uh, 400 series. I think there are some stuff. I think, uh, yeah, there are some error that relates to get. There are some error code that relates to put. There are some error codes that relates to patch. So you need to implement it. So whenever users is doing a get request, if there is some corresponding errors at your end, you need to inform the user of those errors yeah some sort of in the return data data structure you have to put errors in some standard format it can be at the top I'm not sure if it part of part of header part of header probably um, is, is not a good idea and when it's error you are not you are not sending uh, all the other information you are just sending error object yeah that can also be a JSON object right with multiple fields JSON object yeah that can be there and another thing is uh, probably you can mention the uh, 200 masses I think the error code and the corresponding message description all those things and if you want to put multiple messages okay for this case you probably will not need multiple messages because all these standard things uh, but if, if you want to give some more details then probably you can I think you have to think yeah, if you need to anyway I think for a standard API, in the, at the minimum, probably the 200 series, 400 series, and 500 series, those probably the standard practice to give those error codes and the corresponding errors, handle those errors on the server side and inform the client of, of, of that thing, right? So, yeah, that will be there. And you can, you can go some more error handling. You can go for some more error handling. Probably is your custom error that you want to inform to the consumer. It's not the customer. What, what I mean is, it's not the standard uh, HTTP related status code related errors, all those things. It's uh, very specific to the application on the uh, uh, or the domain. Yeah, still you might be you you can give some sort of code just assign your custom code and give some some information as part of your JSON output or, uh, or API output but you might also want to give some sort of documentation on your website or somewhere or the documentation that you will deliver to the consumer the description of this uh, uh, of this you know what do they what does it mean or how to handle those things what are the troubleshooting points yeah and those are the stuff that you can give in here okay as I told documentation as the term came yeah for a great API a great documentation is a must Sometimes you will hear your API is as good as your documentation. So you have to make it really good if you want your consumer to be able to use your uh, to be able to use your API. And if you want to make your API popular, then there is uh, the documentation has to be really good. Yeah, this is one another way to make your interface to the user great right okay documentation URL uh, making the making the API great pleasant to the consumer one another thing the URL and the API version that is one other thing okay versioning can be important 
version versioning your API should be uh, important because uh, many times it happens you will be developing an API probably to test out the market probably you are not very concerned you don't know your, your market but still you have to yeah you have to design well from the beginning but uh, but many times it happens in, in real life in the beginning you start start out small or simple then you explore on this so you might release your version version 1 version 2 version 3 now where to include this version do you want the user whenever you upgrade your API to version 2 all the old compatibility should be there or you want your uh, users to refer to the new API but what if you make some drastic change how everything should adapt it should be given a consideration right okay yeah one thing is you actually should not make a drastic change to your API and the URL and all those things or you should not make your API API so drastic change that the consumer have to rewrite their applications yeah so that's not a great design a great thing to do but anyway in terms of standard practice I think there are two ways to um, include the versioning and the users know one thing is as part of the URL you can include the version 1.1 1.2 yeah, not great but I'm going there 2, 2.1, 2.2 those kind of version you can part of the uh, yeah sometimes it's, it's not that friendly and another approach is the header some sort of HTTP header you can you can put the version information is there if you want another standard practice is putting the major version in the main URL and then putting the minor version in the HTTP header that is one of the standard practice I think um, sometimes yeah if you, if you change your API you probably need to provide some sort of compatibility and if you, there is a drastic change I think Twitter has this I think version 2 version 1 those kind of thing it's probably part of the part of the URL as well yeah there are some design considerations here if I have not given you enough information or it's confusing please check in the uh, some other uh, documentation or probably in the internet you will find lots of resources I'm just trying to point to what needs to be consideration what are the considerations for a good API and I'm trying to uh, point out some Okay. Return data type. You know, I have to take a break. I have to take a break. I'll come back. I can save everything. data type so your just uh, sorry your API yeah your API will return some data return some data 
think the standard practice is XML or JSON. XML this probably is actually more on the soap or old style. JSON is the new and rest style. Then JSON it should be preferred because it's fast. There's overhead, not uh, not verbose, and the uh, structurally it's good. Processing can be easy. Okay, so. In terms of return data type, what else you need to consider? Return data type, return data type, right? Okay, let's say JSON data. So you know the object, key object pair, right? And double quotation and colon and all those things. And sometimes uh, it can be nested. Okay, I think what I'm trying to say, there are some standards that you need to know. Course or reference link header. Reference link header. There are two, uh, two concepts. I think when data is uh, uh, embedded or for a better organization of the data, simple organization data, you might have to use these concepts. And sometimes, um, the array might here I think array means I think in JSON for a particular let's see message message what you can give this and this it actually is an array it is under the same message key but uh, yeah I think rather than yeah, I think it, it, it will be by default there, right? Just the standard, it will be there. Yeah, and probably there, uh, yeah, as I told, these are the stuff that you need to um, check. I'm trying to um, see what else I can uh, tell. Return data type. Okay, I think I, I can go back to the URL convention thing. So, camel case. snack case then in the API or in the return data type you might take one of these approach camels or snack case okay uh, I think according to the finding research snack case is 20% easier to read but I saw a bias I think in the Java platform or even on the .NET platform camel case is a little bit biased camel case is I think I might have seen more people are using camel case more often than snake case I might have seen Snack case people are using in the open source PHP platform. Snack case that they probably are trying to uh, use it more. But in, in recent times, in the object oriented PHP, I believe they are trying to use uh, camel case as well. Anyway, uh, you need to make it starting. One of the standard practice is when in the JSON API. 
output consuming part one standard practice is using using snack case here but if you are allowing uh, developing some sort of SDK for C sharp Java camel case is uh, used or not sure why but it can be because uh, as I told before probably java.net they use more camel case than snake case that can go on but probably in the uh, in the SDK recommendation probably if you used SDK for PhD, PHP they might be recommending camel case as well okay anyway I, uh, I have to take more look into it or probably you can take a more look into it why this is preferred and what is the standard and why anyway that is one thing okay while I was telling this I was uh, trying to I remember one other design consideration I have to let's see snack case camel case let me let me see um, what more I can add in the different sections I told okay the URL part right URL part one thing um, you can give some standard interfaces like user messages user messages just for some common request you probably can some sort of a standard URL that you can make okay there are more in the URL thing anyway there are some other concept like uh, caching staging paging ok uh, and there is one another concept like Hatio or something I have to see there is just some standard term in that okay anyway caching 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 I think for a standard for a standard requests you might want to might want to cache the result so that uh, the load is less we want to cache the result and probably some sort of expiry with some everything staging paging yeah I think one other strong practice is uh, deliver page by page not giving all the information at once at one load uh, yeah to reduce this and another thing is yeah that probably um, some other considerations that you need to put Okay, let me see what Google gives.
I probably can uh, mm, give some in more information after finding out. Let's see. Hatios is the term that I was trying to remember. I think in the Hatios, I think it, it just the uh, give a main interface and giving some linking. So whether that's a good uh, design for uh, APIs or not, I think embedded links probably that's not uh, it's not mature in that aspect for API design. Anyway, I think that can be it.